Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, the first day of December. I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, the trial of a former Prince George's police officer got underway this morning. Jenchevsky Santiago is charged with assault and use of a firearm in the commission of a crime. Our Byron Scott has the story. Santiago waived his right to a jury trial, making this a bench trial. And what that means is the judge alone will decide, based on the evidence, whether the defendant is guilty or innocent. The attorney for former Prince George's police officer, Jenshevsky Santiago, says his client's actions on May 2014 were not criminal. The incident, which was caught on cell phone video, was shown in court. It depicts the officer pressing a gun to the head of William Cunningham of Bowie. Cunningham's cousin, Keneath Smith, testified he was dropping his cousin off at his home when Santiago pulled up and told them they couldn't park the car in front of Cunningham's own house. Cunningham testified he was walking towards his front door when the officer ran after him with his weapon drawn. He told the court Santiago pressed the gun against the back of his head. Cunningham said, quote, I was scared to death. I thought I was gone. On the video, as the gun is pressed against Cunningham's head, you can hear what appears to be the officer saying, I dare you to, expletive, fight me, son. In opening arguments, the defense said Santiago never had his finger on the trigger, indicating he never intended to shoot, and thus Cunningham should not have been in fear. Both victims quoted the officer as saying, PG County officers shoot people, and that he had been to Iraq and wasn't afraid of either Cunningham or Smith. Santiago was arrested shortly after the incident and indicted earlier this year. The defense contends Santiago's actions only indicate poor judgment and he should be found not guilty. Cunningham says he plans on filing a civil suit. As for this trial, it's expected to wrap up tomorrow. At the courthouse, Byron Scott, CTV News. And Santiago is expected to take this stand in his own defense. Well, the Prince George's County Council elects new leadership. During today's session, members voted District 6 Representative Derek Davis as chairman and District 3's Danielle Gleros as vice chair. Davis says he'll focus on strengthening the tax base, address the structural deficit, and tackle housing issues in legislative year 2016. We have to understand transportation as it pertains to housing. We have to understand housing stock, keeping the, the rates affordable to attract folks so that we can begin to grow. Walkability and sustainability, looking at how the millennials want to live because we're attracting them. And we just found out this past year, the council often sparred with County Executive Ashern Baker over funding priorities. Baker says his deep friendship with Davis will help the two branches navigate their differences. He talked about um, downtown Largo, which is a big project of ours, not just a hospital, but having government offices around there, and I think we'll, we'll see eye to eye. But, you know, they're the legislative branch. I'm the executive branch. Um, I understand it. I used to be a legislator, so I understand they have their role. Constitutionally, they have to fill, and I respect that. And the same thing I have to do um, running the day-to-day -day operations of this government, and I'll do that, but we'll work together. And after the gavel exchange, the council officially recessed for its winter break and will reconvene in January 2016. Well, a state heroin task force releases its final report today. The 11-member group was created by Governor Larry Hogan in February to address the state's growing heroin and opioid abuse. The panel's 33 recommendations are divided into seven areas, which include expanding access to treatment, boosting overdose prevention efforts, and finding alternatives to incarceration. The suggestions also seek to enhance quality of the quality of care, improve state-supported services, increase law enforcement options, and promote educational prevention tools. Well, all over the region, people are commemorating World AIDS Day. Today, Oxon Hill High School held an assembly to discuss the real facts about HIV and AIDS. Speaker Dwayne Lawson Brown from Real Talk DC spoke with students about the deadly disease and safe sex practices. The teens had an opportunity to ask questions and many myths were debunked. It's really important that youth get this message because they're the ones that have all the access to the youth. Um, folks don't want to hear a message from, you know, somebody 45, gray hair, not really like part of the culture. Well, this information is important to the student body because 
um, you can break stigmas. It's a big thing saying that, yeah, a lot of people, oh, you, you can get HIV from, you know, kissing someone or from drinking after someone when that's not the case. The biggest thing is ignorance. If you don't know, if you don't have the information, then you're spreading false truth. Real Talk DC is a part of Whitman Walker Health. Um, we're part of their youth services program uh, based out of Washington, D.C., and we're all about providing true and uh, accurate information for youth uh, 13 to 24. So a lot of our work involves hosting events that promote HIV testing, awareness, and treatment for folks living with HIV. And the event was sponsored by the student chapter of the NAACP.